Holy Spirit, we are open to receive of your tutorship and mentorship. We submit to your ministry that as words we go forth from my mouth, Father, let it be ministered through the Spirit to the hearts of your sons and your daughters, working wonders inside of their beings, in their minds, in their cells, in their bodies, in their tissues. Father, take the word and heal every part that needs healing. Teach every part that needs teaching. Instruct and perfect every part that needs perfecting. In the name of Jesus. We just want to thank you for a beautiful semester that has begun. It has started well. It will finish well. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for a year that has gone, uh, a month that has gone halfway already. Thank you it has started well. It will finish well. Father, we thank you because we have started with you. We'll finish with you. Thank you for a year that has started already. It has started well. It will finish well. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just worship the Lord with a wave of free Amen. And just bless his holy name. Just bless him because there is none like him. Just exalt him because he is king of glory. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you for provisions. Thank you for supply. Thank you for new things you are doing. Thank you for new businesses. Thank you for new opportunities. Thank you for trips. For, for mercy journeys. Thank you for new monies. Thank you for new prosperity in our businesses. In the name of Jesus, thank you for the alerts. We bless your holy name. Be praised, Adonai. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Can you celebrate God most high? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our God, our God is good. And all the time. Praise the Lord. Can we please have our seats? Please greet someone by your side. On my behalf, amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome somebody who's not been around for a while. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. We're so happy to see you. Amen. Every one of you, praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Our wonderful brother, Noni B is back. We're happy to see you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you, sir. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, how's Pastor Gibson doing? He's doing fine. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Jesus. Wow. Amen. Those of you that traveled, I couldn't welcome Brother David back the other time. Welcome, sir. Nice to see you. Praise the Lord. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And I'm every other person who traveled. I hope I didn't miss any person. The Lord bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. Our God is good. And all the time. Amen. How's the semester going? Those of you who started classes already, how's the semester going? Said Aubrey. Amen. I pray it continues like that. Amen. Amen. I pray it continues like that. Um, there's so much to be thankful to God about. Amen. So much. God is doing so many good things. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I think I think from, from, from next week we have to officially give space for testimonies now. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I think we need to create space now for testimonies. So that we be, we can be having people tell tell uh um of what God is doing in their lives. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because um, it's amazing how testimonies can help other people's faith. You know, there are some of you who are going through things. And um, when you hear other people's story, you will know that you too can. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is going to help. Um, God is going to help our prayer points. Amen. Amen. This year, our prayer points are going to be very long. But they are going to be full of thanksgiving. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 When you have different companies, you have to thank God for each of them. Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. Father, thank you for. Father, thank you for. Father, thank you for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. This year, God wants to do mighty things, and um, I'm appreciative of what He's already doing. Amen. Amen. On Wednesday, you know, we have been looking at our loyalty and disloyalty series this month in particular we're looking at loyalty amen. amen loyalty proverbs 25 verse 23 
Let's begin from the Proverbs 25, verse 23. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Before I go into the message, which will come up soon now um, with the verse, let me say this quickly. Um, as you grow older, okay? As you grow older, you learn to value and treasure relationships. Amen. That is why marriage is for old age. I mean, like, mature age. Two-year-old, three-year-old don't get married because they don't know how to value relationships yet. They don't know how to commit. They don't know how to covenant. And that's why marriage is a covenant. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I go on, please join me to celebrate our wonderful pastors. Amen. Awesome. <laughs> Men of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Pastor Emmanuel, Pastor Engineer Isaiah, and Pastor Phoebe. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you so much. Amen. And please join me to honor anybody that is joining us online. We love you. The Lord bless you. Amen. The Lord bless you. Any person that is watching us online or that will watch it, we're praying for you. Amen. Thank you so much and let's have our seats. God bless you. Amen. Please be at home and feel at home. And if you're watching from home, feel at home. And um, if you're very far, feel at home. Amen. But if you're not too far, next time feel at church. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Don't just feel at home. Feel at church. Amen. Feel at church. Praise the Lord. Try to feel at church. Amen. Amen. Come over and um, join us. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a reason why online service was made. It was made especially for those who are distant, not for those who are close. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wow. Yeah, I was talking about relationships, maturity. And you learn to covenant. Tell anybody covenant. You make an agreement, and a covenant is an agreement, and you stick with it. Praise the Lord. A covenant means I agree with you. We agree. That's why the Bible says, can two work together unless they be agreed? And when you're a person of covenant or people of covenant, you, you learn to take each other seriously. Amen. Tell anybody, take, take me seriously. Say, take your church seriously. Say, take God seriously. Covenanting or making agreements is a principle from God. And that's why even the Bible itself is a covenant, new and old covenant, new and old testament. And the thing about a covenant or a testament is, a testament literally says, I'm going to stick with you to the very end. Tell anybody, I'm going to stick with you to the very end. Hallelujah. Um, a lot of times we talk about being loyal to a calling or to a man of God or to a ministry or to the things of God, let me say this. It's not so much how far you have come, but how far, when it comes to covenant, you are willing to go. I'm going to get somebody. It's not so much how far you have come, but how far you are willing to go. And that is why every time it is the end that speaks. And the Bible said in Revelation, everyone that endures to the end, they shall be rewarded. It is not how far you have come. It is how far you are willing to go. Any person can endure a season. Am I going to somebody? Any person can endure four years in Ukraine. Hallelujah. Any person can endure a church or a department. True loyalty is known in the covenant and you're holding your part to the end. Sometimes I hear folks or I see folks who tell you that, say things like, you know, I'm coming to that, that's my focus of my teaching today. Say things like, you know, um, I can't wait to graduate and leave you people alone. Oh yeah, oh yeah. When you're a leader and a pastor, you hear strange things. Somebody tell you it's just one year remaining. I'll soon go and leave all of you people. Those words mean a lot. Any smart person it can read and discern your heart is not here anymore. Your heart is not with me. Your heart is not with us. It's not how far you have come. It's how far you are willing to go with someone. I might not know somebody. Do not be that person. Who is, he, who is, who is here for example, in the church or in a relationship, any kind of relationship, or, you know, in a department, just tolerating. 
Just tolerate him. Me, I can't wait and leave you people alone. Shabia will soon go. Don't wait to go. Go now. Hallelujah. Amen. Now remember this. And like I've been teaching and my disclaimer since every teaching from the, from the one, the last two months on loyalty and disloyalty. We are teaching with intentions to teach. We are making references to some of these things with intentions to teach you. You know, because, because people make mistakes. Every most disloyal case I have seen have happened because people didn't know better. They don't have proper training. So like I always say, the intention is not to mock. The intention is not to um, just to um, get at someone or pay some money back, but to teach. Hallelujah. So every reference and every example you may hear me say is to teach you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Ask your neighbor, how far can you go with me still? Say, are you already tired? Hallelujah. And someone looks at you and tells you, you know, like, me, I'll, I'll soon live here. There's no person who says that where there was a, a bond or a covenant. Where there was true and true love, and it's still there. Whenever you start hearing such kinds of statements, it's a show there is a court already. And let me say this: it does a disservice to whoever the person is. Hallelujah. I've seen some workers in this ministry who ended their ministry in a very unpleasant note. For whatever their reasons were. Folks who started well. And I'm not talking of the obvious ones that I've already said. From when I gave you a key A to J, I think. I'm talking about even some of the salient ones. Let me say this for the benefit of most of you. Especially now we're having some people in final years and all that. And most of you eventually will still get there. Listen to this. It is not so much where you are coming from or where we have been together. But where we are going together. Am I talking to somebody? It is not so much where we have been together. It is where we are to go together. Because where we have been together is nothing compared in time or in years with the place we still have to go together. Hallelujah. There's no normal person huh? who will be excited to be hearing you. Me, I will soon leave you. Hallelujah. There's no normal person. Be careful. Be wise. I notice when people begin to get to their fourth year, fifth year, but, but it's, it's quite amazing because I notice also God has a way of compensating. In my years in ministry, I notice God has a way of com compensating. God has a way of every time my heart is about to bleed, he will bring a reason to make it to be joyful. I notice when people begin to get to like their fourth year, especially fifth year, sixth year, for the ones who, who do um, six year courses, for the ones who do four years, as they begin to reach, for some strange reasons, they begin to detach. They begin to detach. I can, I can understand it logically or physically that, yeah, um, their mind is somewhere else. But let me say this to win a race, as a matter of fact, it's in the last lap you give your best. I mean, I know somebody. It's where? In the last lap you give your best. I've seen some people run races. First year, very wonderful brother or sister. Second year, very wonderful brother or sister. Third year, very wonderful brother or sister. Fourth year, change. Fifth 
for some strange reason, the person starts acting up. It's not how far we have come. It's how far you are ready to walk with us still. Am I talking to somebody? Why do marriages break? Why do relationships fail? Because many times the way people start it is not how they finish. A lot of people know how to put a lot of energies at the beginning. But midway, for some strange reason, they relax. Learn to, learn to start and finish a race. Am I talking to somebody? Learn to start and finish a race. Give your best, even especially at the end. Let it be known at the last hour, up to the last minute until you drop your pen, if you must move and if you must leave, that you spent it all and you did the best that was in you. Am I talking to somebody? Jesus Christ said, I finished my course. Paul, rather. Jesus on the cross says, it is finished. Learn to finish. Am I talking to somebody? Don't just be a starter. There are no rewards for starting. There are rewards for finishing. Hallelujah. So I'm giving you heads up already. Watch out. As you move towards your final days. Your final years. There will be reasons. I'm telling you. Watch out because you're getting a heads up. Don't draw back. Hallelujah. Paul says of Demas, he said, Demas has forsaken me. He has left me. He has gone back to the former things. I'm all alone by myself now. But not Elisha. Praise the Lord. Not Elisha. Not Elisha. Am I talking to somebody? Elisha said, you know, you know, anywhere you're going, I'm going with you. Up to the last second. Praise the living God. So me, I'm, I'm a finisher. Say, so everything I start, I finish. Amen. That's the attitude. That's what? That's the attitude. Loyalty, true loyalty, is not known by how far you have come. It is known by how far you are still willing to go. That's why Jesus Christ looked at the disciples and he questioned them. And he asked them, are you able to drink of this cup? You've been with me three years, but can you drink with the drink of this cup? Paul says, uh, Peter says, yes, I can. All of them said, yes, I can. In the last hour, <laughs> amen, it was tested. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. True loyalty is not in how far you have come, but how far you are willing to go. That is why in the last minute, Jesus Christ is there on his knees in Gethsemane and about to pray. He's about to change his mind. But well, he didn't. Because he knew it is not how far you have come. It's how far you are willing to go. The problem of Lucifer today is not that he didn't have time where there was wonderful worship experience and he had church with God. Amen. Amen. I mean, if you're in heaven, heaven's records, in fact, it's in the book, but I'm sure there were beautiful tapes right now that you can watch in heaven and you'll see Lucifer worshiping. Recorded. But all of that meant nothing. Immediately, he turned his back. True loyalty is not how far you have come. It's how far you are willing to what? To go. Hallelujah. Proverbs 25 verse 23, we set us on the pace. It says, the north wind driveth away what? Rain. So does an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. Hallelujah. Tell anybody, north wind. North. Say the north wind. North. Hallelujah. He said, the same way the north wind drives away rain. Scientifically, the north wind can shift or stop a storm. He said exactly the same way when you see a storm rising. He said the same way your angry countenance can stop a backbiting tongue. 
When someone comes to you, shh, 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 have you seen what Otibe is doing? Otibe, <coughs> don't mind her the way she's doing like that. If you see, if I tell you what I know. The Bible says, the way the person is backbiting, what you do is what makes the person either continue speaking or not. You see, if your countenance changes, Some of you who are with me, we say, some of you these days are beginning to already understand my facial expression. Huh? You know when I'm smiling and you know when my smile means something else. Hmm? It says an angry countenance when you get angry. Someone is talking to you about your husband in a bad way. The thing that rises up in you. I, I, is, is, it, is it my husband you're talking about like that? That is supposed to shut the person immediately. The Bible is saying the reason the people are still able to backbite is because there is no angry countenance. You are okay. You love the Jesus. Hey, hey, tell me more. In fact, I, I, I knew it. What is this? Tell me, tell me. Hey. It's exciting for you to have someone talk and gossip and backbite about somebody else and give bad news. The word of God is saying, if I'm going to deal with these kinds of, these kinds of attitude, a disloyal tongue, a disloyal person, a disloyal person in that department, a disloyal person in that church, he says, I'm going to learn to get angry. Tell anybody, get angry. It's okay to get angry sometimes. Am I talking to somebody? Scripturally, it's okay to get angry sometimes. Tell anybody, it's okay to get angry sometimes. God is giving you permission to be angry here. Don't be angry over the wrong things. Hallelujah. You sent a message. The person didn't reply. You're angry for days, for weeks. Carry it in your head. That's not why you should be angry. Amen. It says one, is, it says one clear reason to be angry is when a person is backbiting. To enable backbiting. Do you know backbiting means back? You're biting b the back of the person. <laughs> Hallelujah. A backbiter is behind you. Anybody who is backbiting you is behind you. Am I talking to somebody? Any person who is backbiting is behind you. The person will always be seeing your back and will never be able to judge you right because all he's seeing is your back. And the person will never be able to be in front of you because the person is behind you. Now the danger of correlating with a backbiter is you move also behind. The person you put are backbiting, both of you are behind that person. You can never catch the person. Hallelujah. Refuse to be behind. Am I talking to somebody? Learn to get angry. Don't just have um, um, selfie poses. You have the smile you do when, you, when the camera comes up. Have the one you use to deal with backbiters. Practice your mean face. Your angry look. Amen. Let it, let it get used to it. Let it come instantly. Immediately you see the person manifesting. You just give that look. The Bible says of Jesus Christ, when the demon saw him, he asked, have you come to, to destroy us before our time? To see something about Jesus. Jesus did not come to play. Jesus had a destroyer look. Amen. Amen. I was I was I was I was uh, at Tenopio earlier at the, at the at of the, earlier in the month, and um, there's this wonderful friend of our ministry, uh, Pastor Desmond, is a pastor um, in Ghana at um, the Winners Chapel of David Oedipo. and he was talking to Pastor Iman. He was tell, asking him, and he, he told him something. He said, he said, he said, he said, he said. 
If your pastor asks you now to go somewhere, will you go? That's how he speaks. Very serious. I mean, face. So, will you go? Pastor Simon is the one telling me this. He said, yes. He said, yes. Pastor Simon said, yes. He said, good. He said, for me, if I hear you speaking about my bishop, I kill you. I kill you literally. I'm talking of loyalty. So you come tomorrow and be telling such a person junk about his man of God. Come with your casket. <laughs> Can I say this? The reason why some people don't prosper, and let me tell you the truth, and that's why I'm taking my time. It's almost two months teaching on this, literally the same thing. Sometimes the thing that is stopping you is not the devil. You can never get grace to walk in your life from someone whom you dishonor. In your heart, in your mouth. You speak evil of the person. You speak bad of the person. You make mockery of the person. You talk unnecessary jokes of the person. And tomorrow you say, let the person pray for you. And you shout, Amen! His angel will say no. Even if he doesn't know, his angel will say no, 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 no. I'm not going there. I'm telling you the truth. Can anybody get angry? The only time you see Jesus angry in scriptures was when he pertains to his father's house. Hallelujah. The Bible says, and then took note and remembered the scripture that he said, the zeal of his father's house consumed him. He got angry. Don't get comfortable when you are speaking evil of your God. Speaking evil of men of God. Speaking evil of the fathers of the faith. Speaking evil of your own pastor. Your leader or departmental head. And you are at home and comfortable. You are, you are sending a message. You know, someone comes to you and is like, hey, Pastor, you won't believe what these people were saying about you. The question is, what were you doing when they were saying it? I'm not going to know somebody. Personally, huh? personally, I take note of people who hang around people who don't like me. If I know this person does not like me, and you are a friend to this person, you are, you are a suspect. I put my eyes more on you than even on this person. I'm telling you the truth. Why are you so comfortable with making friends with someone who hates me? And why do you think he will not poison you? And if he's going to poison you, then you are most likely the one he's going to use to poison me. Because he knows already. I know him and he cannot get him. But you is going to try to use. You are in a place people speak anyhow about God and the things of God. You are just okay. You are just comfortable. You are at peace. The Bible says, woe, woe, woe is you who is at peace in Zion. You are just comfortable. Nothing in you is angry. It's most likely you are not a part of what you claim to be a part of. If not, you would open your mouth. If not, you would get angry. If not, you walk away. I'm not going to somebody. I told you the other time. I, I, tell, I, say, I say, if anybody, if I notice anybody, just anybody, just anybody, you just speak any eye about any man of God, I'll just delete you. I won't even ask you why. You won't have the privilege to explain. I'm not interested. Just like last, last time, you know, Last year, I think, some people were talking nonsense about men of God. God bless them because they, 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 they cannot stop what God is doing. I don't waste time. I just delete you.
And if we have any other dealing at all, I'll just let you know. Um, don't go to this area. If you go to this area, that's the last time you join us. It's called the North Wind. Tell anybody North Wind. So there's an angry countenance, a backbiting tongue. Let's look at some things from the book. Remember, we are teaching from the book Loyalty and Disloyalty by Bishop Doug Eward Mills. Amen. Today, I want to teach on the message I titled um, Common Words. Of disloyalty, common words of disloyalty, or common words of disloyal people, the common things they say. Amen. You know, I, you remember I, I, I told you I, I read this book for the first time after the incidences that have happened that happened in our church in 2013 and 2014. I, it had already happened before I stumbled on this book, but I remember reading this book and I was laughing and crying at the same time because it was like a prophetic book, word for word. Literally everything, as I call it, common words. Literally everything in this book that the man of God had gone through had happened in our ministry within a year. The exact same kind of words. That's why I say common words. And we're going to rush them by the help of the Holy Spirit. Remember Matthew 12 verse 34 says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it is usually, and that's why I tell you how I was able to find them. You know, by that time, I had not even, I had not even read the book. But I knew these disloyal people and these um, mutineers or, uh, or what do you call it, rebels, so to say, by the words they said. Tell anybody the words they say. When one comes and stands and is telling you, people are saying, I knew there are people. First, it's no one. Began to look for them one by one until we caught all of them. Yeah, we caught them. They were shocked. The day I assembled all of them together, put them in one place. Hallelujah. So please, pay attention to the following very common ones. Because some of you, you may meet them as you grow in your Christian race. You may have met some already in the church. Amen. Um, I hope they are known. Amen. Um, but if you meet them, mark them. Amen. The man of God says, the statements tell you a lot about the personalities concerned and about the condition of their hearts. Let's begin with this statement I heard from the right-hand man of a pastor of a very last church. Number one, statement number one. Um, I'm speaking of common statements or common words of disloyalty. Number one, you hear statements like, some of us could be head pastors. It is just that we have decided to submit. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, when someone says, you know, me too, I can be pastor now. Oh, yeah, now B. Amen. I told you the story of the guy who died trying to be pastor. And I told you of the story of the 14 who died trying to stop Benson in the house. If you don't have the grace and the calling, eh? What others are doing and prospering, you can do it and it will kill you. Usher, oh, Usher, please don't ooze I told that message a few years ago. If it is not the calling, your grace and calling, if you are not anointed for the office, you will die. And God will look for another person. I'm telling you the truth. The Bible says, let every man abide wherein he is called. Hallelujah. The day the femur will try to be a brain, it will die of a serious cancer. I'm telling you the truth. Because it does not have enough nerve cells to be a brain. When the neurons begin to expand and grow to meet the purpose of the entire body, it will die. Because it was not this calling. And yet the brain is doing it.